Okay, that takes us to close out for meetings lesson one. Um, in this lesson, we've covered the following subjects. A, we talked about arranging meetings. Uh, B, we talked about how to begin a meeting. And in part C, what we do and how we disagree and agree in meetings. I hope you were paying attention during these sections. These lessons may help you when you arrange a meeting or being at a meeting at as an attendee. It's important that you understand certain key English phrases and attitudes related to meetings. A successful meeting has no surprises. With proper preparation and careful organization, a meeting can run smoothly. Remember, setting goals and time limits, keeping to the agenda and knowing how to refocus are key parts of an effective meeting. This may sound simple in your own native language, but it's a little tricky when your participants do not speak fluent English. Hopefully these lessons will help you to hold or attend a meeting with success. Reread through the lessons, review the vocabulary and check your understanding. If there's something you don't understand, tell us and we'll do it again. Words like progress, board, brainstorming and discuss are all important in meetings. Vocabulary like this will help you get started with this sort of thing in the future. Tips to remember. Send out a specific and written agenda beforehand. Vague points requesting a discussion on a topic rarely end on a very productive note. If you're new to dealing with agendas and you want specific points tackled, start with a point form list of topics to be discussed and make sure the material is provided to attendees in plenty of time before the meeting. Also be sure to provide background information on the agenda to everyone so that everybody attending has the same information. Everyone having access to the same information reduces the amount of confusion in a meeting. Another useful tip, check the meeting list. For effective decision making, you need to have a minimum number of people attending the meeting. This is called a quorum. More on that later. The purpose of meetings is to make decisions and get work done. Check the meeting list, double check who's coming and if you're the organizer, determine if they're supposed to be there. If you're attending the meeting as an attendee, be sure to read the meeting or attendee list before you walk into the room. Do you see any unfamiliar names? If so, consider looking them up in your organization's directory or on LinkedIn. Surprises are not your friend when it comes to meetings. Another important tip and one that is crucial, stick to the time schedule. Seriously, make sure everything is on time. Watching the clock is important if you want to have an effective meeting. When nobody takes charge of managing time, it's easy to become lost and confused. Oh no, make that time count. Meeting organizers or chairpersons need to start the meeting on time and end on time, or even a few minutes early. Say you are running a large or complex meeting, have your colleagues serve as timekeeper. If you're attending a meeting, as the lesson states, starts by arriving early at the meeting. That means you avoid having appointments for other non-crucial work whenever possible around the meeting time. You also want to avoid going off topic. You have to manage the participants carefully. At the beginning of the meeting, you explain to everyone that you want them to focus their discussion on the agenda. Further, explain that this rule will help the meeting stay, to help the meeting stay productive and end on time. Going home on time is important to everyone, which in itself will help focus people's minds on getting through the discussion topics. So what happens in a meeting? Meeting participants go through each agenda item one by one. Some will be bigger than others and the appropriate amount of time should be allocated to each. The chairperson typically monitors and determines any contributions to the discussion. 
encouraging participation by all. Another tip for you, we've got plenty of tips today. Be sure to take notes for yourself. Taking notes in a meeting is an essential skill, but for some reason, some people just don't do it. The key reason to take notes in a meeting is to record any questions or assignments that have been directed to you, and also to write down any useful points or words. A paper notebook and pen, a pencil, would work for this. Also, always bring a copy of the agenda and use that document to guide your note taking. The chairperson also may need to take notes. If you plan on sending the minutes of or a summary of the meeting to people that were in the meeting, say this at the start of the meeting and explain that you, what you will include in the message. Be aware though that being a chairperson is a difficult job and more often another participant or more likely a secretary will be assigned the specific role of minute taking. More on this later in discussions. Another part to consider is interruptions. How do we either interrupt or deal with an interruption? Dealing with interruptions in a meeting is an important skill as we covered in the lesson. Remember, it's not a bad thing to interrupt as long as you do it politely and have a solid point to bring up for the meeting. Soft language is a great skill to possess. And that concludes the closeout video. Hopefully you've learned some useful things, but should you have any questions, please go to the forum and raise your question. It's likely your question is being thought by more than just you. We'll see you next week for lesson two, so have a great weekend.